Good evening and welcome to my presentation. Actually, I am recording this in the middle of the night so as to avoid some uh, background noise infested by both human and non-human factors. Uh, well, let me quickly give you a heads up on the modalities that I'll be adopting for this presentation. First, I will be doing a one take straight. Since it's meant to be a conference-like presentation, I expect that like a live event, there will be some glitches here and there. And also that we are on technology, there might be some form of technical itches along the way, but I am going to try my best to make sure that I go as seamless as possible. Um, and then I will be switching to a slide very soon, sharing my screen and walking through slide presentations for this. And at the same time, juggling between reading from draft materials, which I have saved in my smaller gadget here. So saying that, let's move straight into the presentation. First of all, let me start with this very important quotation. The conflation of symbolic space and lived experience and the final extension of manipulative imagination into the domain of perception is the condition in which we now find ourselves, the phantasmatic, a realm of created illusion that intervenes in the real and actual and therefore becomes a part of his fabric, which is ours, not just as beliefs, but as events imagined into being that have, that have actual effect. That is on page 18 of Drucker's The General Theory of Social Relativity. This particular quotation resonated strongly with me, and it is from this that I was able to negotiate the idea which I took to form this presentation. It is also from this particular quotation that the idea for the topic, the title, began to take shape. So let's go straight into the presentation. Yes, I have crafted this topic based on some of the following reasons. Uh, Number one, the general theory of relativity, the book by Joan Drucker directly connects to the aesthetic condition of memes in my own thinking, especially on social media platform. Number two, phantasmatic, that contextual word as used in the book can be applied in very strong terms to the creation and consumption of memes on social media as an alternative source of communication. Three, the social media can be regarded as one of the biggest, if not the biggest arena in our contemporary world, where conventional text can be readily converted into non-realist text, digitized format, yet sustaining the very trust of information which is inherent in the text. And fourth, the author herself consistently and copiously utilize the words social, media, and meme in the book. So I found it readily useful for me to construct my own idea. Studying COVID-19 meme communication on social media, therefore, seems to be a reasonable avenue for me to draw some form of responses to the book. In this presentation, I aim to use the text as a guide to explore how COVID-19 memes can be perceived as helping to shape and modify meanings in communication beyond the conventional transmission of information. So how do we explain Drucker's general theory of relativity? The book raises many questions as well as questioning many social epistemologies. Its argument proposes a non-linear, non-local, and relativist 
features of the social. We can see speculative thoughts of uh, Drucker in a network which oscillates between different areas and different disciplines like aesthetics, performance, history, politics and power discourse, media, culture, and even science. And just opposing this around our own arguments. Drucker's main argument is that social meaning should be or is derived from experiential and aesthetic interpretation of many possibilities which are codependent and constitutive relationalities with each other. In this wise, it recognizes that not only are all media social, but that the social itself is a medium. That is also in Drucker. The idea resonates also with that of Bruno Latour, uh, a scholar who is well notorious for engaging the environment in a manner that human and non-human materiality constitutes the very effectiveness of the society. In the book, The General Theory of Social Relativity, Drucker deploys the quantum theory, which is from physics, to approach the understanding of how the society works and the affective forces in nonlinear aesthetics and politics. Quantum theory works with the assumption that, I quote, no physical entity is ever in a definitive state. The most one can ever say about a given entity is that it has certain probabilities of being in certain states, end of quote. That quote is by Ben Gozel in the book, in, in an essay, Quantum Theory and the Unconscious. By adopting the quantum theory for our work, which offers a non-deterministic view of the universe, and also making room for a complex non-linear positionality, Drucker's notion of social relativity is constructed in the sense that we gain better understanding of the social if it acts through us in a non-linear affective dynamics. This is because the social is relationally constituted in a web of interaction by agents who are brought into being by that web of interaction. Thus, according to her, the social is also a medium, like I've said. The book addresses the fundamental question of how we should conceive of the world, understand it, and interact with the forces at work in the social world, and also engage innovative concepts for thinking about social processes in a framework of diverse possibilities. It is this position that Drucker follows throughout the book, and in doing so, she would break the realist mode of interpretation in the book. I also quote from the book, now we function through our shared addiction to a symbolism that is all surface symptoms. That is on page 80 of the book. And for me, that marks the beginning of our reasoning in breaking down the realist form of interpretation in texts such like ours. Meaning for Drucker cannot be mechanistic. Thus, in the book, she breaks the boundary of mechanistic writing with non-realist tendency. Drucker suggests that the non-realism is not simulacrum, simulacrum which itself is some form of illusion, but a realm of created illusion that intervenes in the real and actual and therefore becomes a part of its fabric, which is ours, not just as beliefs, but as events imagined into being that have actual effect. That quotation is on page nine from the book. And specifically regarding arts, 
which is the focus of this reflection, she opines that its inherent linear logic always break down and not giving room to further imaginative thoughts. She offers that, and I quote, going back for a moment to the arts, that crucible of imaginative critical thought, we find the concept of social mechanics usually prevails. Political art imagines itself as potent against real agents, even when they are conceived within the symbolic. But direct end or directed action misses the mark in taking aim at the phantasm. We need to understand the way phantasmatic phenomena wield imaginary influence and impact. That quotation is taken from page 10 of the book. And perhaps one of the biggest marker of a non-realist stance in the text is that we'll find flashes of self-quotation almost throughout the book. Right from page 11, we find Drucker quoting herself in the book or putting quotation marks on some of our own writings. Um, realism preaches a detailed, almost accurate, and unembellished depiction of life and nature. Drucker's book transgresses this mode. Now, let's try and explain the quantum theory analogy. The quantum theory is a branch of physics, like we've said, that explains how the behavior of even the smallest atom works to make up matter that constitutes the universe. Uh, for Drucker, it means that everything, little or not, are important constituents of the universe. Um, like I said earlier on, this is a physics theory, but in adopting it, it addresses, Drucker addresses the fundamental question of how we should conceive the world, understand and interact with the forces around it. Now, to the case study, which is meme, the word phantasmatic for me directly connects with memes. And in using it as communication, I think the non realist form of connection to phantasmatic uh, is inherent in some of the COVID 19 memes that I was able to retrieve from the internet. The Epigraph that I read earlier, the opening quotation, provides a kind of foundation to this very engagement. Drucker has regarded the phantasmatic as the condition of affective engagement with consensual delusion. That is on page four. Phantasmatic for her is the condition of affective engagement with delusion. That is, it is something that is real in the garb of the unreal. So as to have an unconventional perspective of a phenomenon. So how does this play out in COVID-19 memes construction? First, let us explore some description of meme itself. What is meme? Um, by doing that, I first of all go to Shipman's description which is a uh, mem is a group of digital items sharing common characteristics of content, form, or stance. And two, they were created with the awareness of each other. And three, were circulated, imitated, or transformed via internet by many users. For the scope of this presentation, let me add a little scope to Shipman's description. Uh, let me complement it with this criteria. Wherein such users are temporarily collected in a digital community by the purpose of their interactions with the digital items in a complexity 
of agency. That criterion drives my proposition for this paper. For Fiona Andrello, she described MIMS as, I quote, in the context of their community, as dealing with a communication among a community that involves more than two people and where the communication flows are more complex and multi-directional. That multi-directional is very, very important also in our description of non-realist form of communication. This description is also aligns with Drucker's contextual world, phantasmatic. Now, MEM itself is a non-realist mode in its conception and in its communication ability. It's a mode that has been converted from text to image. The communication is done via the construction of text in the image or by the image itself. And most of the time, the responses, feedback generated by memes is also in a non-realist format. We shall experience some of this in the progress of this presentation. So let's go to our case study number one. We can see this image mem. It came out at the outset of the general lockdown from COVID-19. And you can see what is written on it. If you need 144 rolls of toilet paper for a 14-day quarantine, you probably should have been seeing a doctor long before COVID-19. Well, this is an anecdotal response to the panic buying of toilet paper, which uh, was predominant at the outset of the pandemic. The frenetic rush was as a result of anxiety and as a, also as a result of psychological responses to information in that time of uncertainty. People overstock on the buying and most stores actually ran out of supplies and places embargo on the number of rolls that could be purchased by a particular uh, shopper. Now, meanings can be attributed to this image in different dimensions. Seeing it, one can directly reflect that this is like sending messages to some of the people who actually rushed to stock up on uh, toilet paper. And we know the consequences of that. It's to the detriment of some people who might not have the economic capacity or are not able to negotiate the logistic to get uh, enough toilet paper on time. So this might be a kind of warrant which tries to which tries to send a message a mockery to those who actually rushed along. Of course it can also be interpreted as people who rush to stock up on toilet paper actually have some form of illness that they are battling with. Like it's a multidimensional form of meaning that can be attached to this image. But what is particularly interesting for me in this image is the responses that it generated. Out of all the responses that it generated, I picked out two, which for me forms a kind of non-realist feedback information to certain uh, information, non-realist form of feedback or responses to an information. The first one is a responder or a user online responded to the post that they are gonna wrap themselves in toilet roll because we are short of protective gears. We can see the multidimensionality of this kind of uh, responses. We know that some of the things that are not readily available 
at the outset of COVID-19 and even as at now, uh, protective gears is one of them. So this is, uh, this response is trying to say that probably the toilet paper would take the place of the protective gear or in another dimension, we might interpret it as the toilet paper could be wrapped up to protect one from contracting the virus. So there are a different dimension to putting meaning to this response. And the second one, I could have understood if it was a sickness that made you run to the loo a lot, but it's a cough. Now, this also has a multi-dimensional implication in its meaning. It's a cough. COVID-19 is a pandemic that has put the world on a kind of standstill. But the responder is saying it's a cough. So why do we need so much tissue paper? Because it's not something that we will need to have to clean our hands with every time that we need to protect ourselves from COVID-19. So there are dimensionality to this uh, response as also to the first one. Let's go to the second image. And this for me is particularly multi-layered. As we can see, there are two types of people in the world. We can see the first buyer who has stocked up over stock over buy tissue paper. And we can see the second man, the second shopper behind who has bought a pack of Corona beer. So there are really two people in the world. And in the image, there is a very strong consideration for re relatively multi-layered and intertextual mix of both image and text. The image represents a form of meaning which may not even be what is constructed in the image. And that is what is meant by multi-dimensionality. Let us see two responses also to this image. And we'll see how those two responses also have multi-dimensional implications. The first one says the guy with the beer is calling his boss in a minute. Hey boss, sorry, got a case of corona. Yeah, can't come to work. So we can see that is laughable. It is funny, but we can see the multidimensional implication of meanings in that. The first guy who has bought a beer calls his boss and is actually stating the fact that yes, I won't be able to come to work tomorrow because I've got a case of corona. So it probably means I'm going home and I'm going to drink as much as possible, get drunk and not have the energy to be at work tomorrow. But in reception, the boss, the boss is actually going to receive by all intent and purpose that information as meaning that the, uh, the guy has contracted the coronavirus. So we can see multidimensionality in that response to the image. And the second one, you can clearly see that Corona is the driving force here. And that to me is also amusing. The first uh, buyer who has talked up on Corona, on, sorry, on tissue paper, is being motivated by the fear by the anxiety that comes with the pandemic, the corona pandemic. And the second person, probably someone who has very strong flair to drinking corona beer, is also being influenced by the beer, the brand of the beer. So corona is the motivating factor in the action that we are seeing in this image. That is amusing as well as multidimensional. And inherent in those responses and in the image is that phantasmatic context that Drucker tries to ascertain in her work. The very representation of fact 
very representation of the real with some kind of inherent illusion. So the image, though the main image, the last one we see, the main image seems to dominate the text also adds significantly to the meaning of the image. That is, there are two kinds of people in the world. That text adds significantly to the meaning of the image. The image and the text therefore form co-concepts for interpretation. We can use the text to interpret the image. We can use the image to interpret the situation there. So from the analysis of responses explication comes from the processing of the image the text and possible underlying meanings in one or in both the image or the text through the image and the responses symbolic image and lived experiences have been conflicted that goes back to the very first quotation at the beginning of this presentation they have been conflicted in constitutive relationalities with each other. So by way of conclusion, I we have seen uh, some form of non-realist negotiation in aesthetics, especially arts and aesthetics, media, in uh, meme images, especially COVID-19 meme images, which follows the track of Drucker's argument, especially a reference to the phantasmatic. Non-realism as seen can then is an aesthetic practice. In arts, in, it can be in politics, like Drucker has emphasized, it can be in power discourse, but because this presentation follows arts, I have based my understanding uh, of non-realism as in as an aesthetic practice in art aesthetic itself as projected by Drucker and I quote is a process of calling attention to something some event object sensation action some phenomenon and that act is generative that means it produces a critical act of differentiation differentiation is the key word there differentiation forms multidimensionality differentiation forms non-linearity differentiation does not conform to the conventional does not conform to the symbolic like we will see in this last meme the nature of uh, the communication there which is also non-realist the image and the text. Other famous artists, they say, try to paint as detailed and as realistic as possible. But Picasso did uh, the contrary. That is like saying Picasso is a non-realist painter. And we can see the image which tries to depict the text. So, um, I want to go to my discussion question, but before then, yes, these are my work cited, some of the uh, materials that I was able to consult for this presentation, and my discussion questions. Yes, like the presentation itself, which is uh, an ongoing idea, which is still in its formative stage. The question to are uh, in their formative stage. I don't know how well I've been able to knit them together, but here they are. Number one, does it open up our perspectives of understanding better when we relay COVID-19 communication via memes? What notion of non-realist perspective do we think of this experience. And number two, can we think of Drucker's the general theory of social relativity in terms of the objects and subject of Proust's Swan's Way? Uh, Proust's Swan's Way have been one of the 
uh, most fundamental text that we related with in the class, probably the most uh, engaged of all the texts. So for me, I feel asking question about um, Drucker's perception in general theory of social relativity might be well informed if I attach it to process Swan's way. Once again, I thank you for listening to my presentation as this is an ongoing idea, ongoing work. I would love ventilation of ideas on this and see if this can be properly developed and better engaged so that I can recontextualize all the ideas. Thank you once again. We meet in class on Tuesday and thank you. Bye-bye. See you.